Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Today we have the honor to be here with Professor David Heyman, who is a professor for infectious diseases at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, uh, and someone with a tremendous amount of experience in public health in general. Uh, before at WHO for many years, he led the polio eradication effort and today is still uh, very much involved in guiding and overseeing the polio virus laboratory containment work. Uh, before that, in charge of communicable diseases, uh, he led the international team that stopped the SARS outbreak, uh, a story which I particularly like in the 1970s, I believe. Uh, he uh, was among the first international team to investigate a uh, deadly unknown disease outbreak outbreak and then Zaire, uh, and he and his team would later co coin the term for that new disease, uh, namely Ebola. Uh, and of course, he was involved in the smallpox eradication effort, and that's what we're here to talk to him about today, to see if there's any parallels to be drawn to the polio eradication effort. Uh, David, first of all, thank you so much for being here uh, with us and taking the time. Perhaps to start with for our audience, can you tell us, smallpox eradication, what was your specific role? Well, in the smallpox eradication program, I was a WHO short-term consultant. I was recruited after I finished my diploma in tropical medicine and hygiene at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And I spent two years as a short-term consultant with the polio, with the smallpox eradication program in the field in the state of Bihar in India. Okay. And, uh, of course, uh, smallpox is so far the only human disease uh, to have been uh, uh, eradicated. Uh, we're working on uh, another eradication program, polio eradication. Uh, what did working on an eradication program uh, teach you? What did you take away from it? Well, actually, the smallpox eradication program was very straightforward and quite simple. It was a program that had two strategies, search and contain. Searching was looking for children or adults who had classical signs of smallpox using search cards, going to villages, communities, going to markets, going to religious festivals. When a patient was identified, the address was taken and a visit was made. If it was diagnosed as smallpox, there was then a vaccination activity, a containment activity, when 30 households around that patient were vaccinated, or if it were an apartment building, the floor above and below and all people on the same floor. And do you think uh, uh, the, the polio eradication program, uh, are there lessons to be drawn from the, from the smallpox eradication effort? Well, smallpox, as all infectious disease programs, depended on good surveillance. So the lesson number one is that good surveillance is important for all eradication programs. However, uh, as you know, um, surveillance has changed and the power of surveillance has become much greater um, by the time polio eradication began. So surveillance is one of the key lessons. Another lesson from smallpox eradication is that vaccination is a very, very powerful tool. Not only have we gotten rid of smallpox, but we've got rid of the suffering, the death, the stigma that occurred after smallpox had occurred from, from facial scarring. And also we don't need to worry about using antivirals, which could become resistant to the medication. So we've done a whole series of things just by eradicating a disease. So number two is eradication is a very beneficial way of controlling a disease. Now, for polio eradication, uh, there are some people who uh, voice concerns that it is taking longer than initially planned, that it is costlier, uh, that perhaps the resources that are being spent on eradicating polio should be spent on other, uh, other public health issues. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, polio is a different disease than, than smallpox. In smallpox, for every infection, there was clinical expression of the disease, which means that every person infected looked the same. They had the terrible lesions of smallpox. If you fast forward to polio, polio, for every up to 500 infections, there's only one person who's symptomatic with paralysis. So it's an entirely different activity. Whereas in smallpox, you could isolate a patient, look for contacts, vaccinate those contacts, and vaccinate those around it, with polio, you have to do a much larger radius of people. You have to find, you have to imagine where those people are, and so you have to do a major campaign every time you identify polio. So it's an entirely different disease clinically. David, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and insights. It's been uh, hugely interesting and, and informative. Do you have any final uh, thoughts for our audience today? 
Yeah, I, I guess I would just say that um, when you think about smallpox, you see how wonderful an eradication program can be. There are no more people being infected with smallpox. There are no more people being scarred facially with smallpox. Facial scarring was a stigma, and women often didn't marry because they had facial scarring from smallpox. And in addition, if you looked at the graph today of infectious disease mortality or death and put smallpox deaths from 1967, which were about 2.7 million, on that graph it would be number one, even without escalating it for population increases. So smallpox was a major killer and a disease which we had to get rid of. It actually was a glimpse, a first glimpse of what happens when there's universal health coverage, because there was universal coverage to smallpox vaccine. If you fast forward to polio eradication, even though it's a different disease and isn't a high mortality disease, it leaves children maimed for life with paralysis that continues throughout their life and they become a burden on themselves and often on society. So it's a very tragic disease and it's a disease which once eradicated will show that the world can pull together and do something which is for the good of humans, a good humanitarian action. Absolutely critical to finish the job then, it, it sounds like. Uh... It's absolutely critical to finish this job. It's close. There were some difficulties encountered um, that weren't known about at the start, such as the vaccine-derived polio. But in the end, it will be worth continuing to get rid of both wild polio virus and vaccine-derived polio. Here's to a polio-free world very soon. David, thank you again uh, for taking the time, and thank you for joining us today, and join us again on another edition of Coffee with Polio Experts. Thank you. Thank you.